It goes without saying that planets have completely changed the dynamic of space engineers, but the building options for atmospheric ships that come with the vanilla game are very limited, as for the most part they behave just like the spaceships we're already familiar with. Given the nature of planets, the lack of fixed wing aircraft in the game seems like a missed opportunity, but this can easily be remedied with the use of a few mods, which I've decided to do. So today, I present the Albatross Twin Jet. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Synergy Shipyard, the Space Engineers series where I take suggestions from the community as well as a few ideas of my own for ships that could be useful, unique or just look cool. Now, I know there are already people out there who are planning to rage at me for abandoning my vanilla only ships, but by ignoring the exceptional mods produced by the Space Engineers community you miss out on so many features that enrich the experience of the game. The Albatross Twinjet makes use of some of these mods, so I see this video as a showcase of some of the features that should be part of the Vanilla Space Engineers experience. The Albatross was inspired by small private aircraft such as the Cessna 182 and was intended to be relatively cheap to run. Powered by a pair of small azimuth fusion reactors and batteries, it has the capability to fly around the Earth-like planet several times off a single charge, with 11 passengers on board. The plane doesn't have a bulky connector for recharging as I reason the power consumption is low enough to spare a minimal amount of uranium to keep the batteries topped up. The two main mods that make the concept work are Digi's Aerodynamic Wings mod and his improved thrusters. They allow the Albatross to fly with agility and efficiency on a pair of atmospheric engines at low power. The wing mod compensates for the main lift thrusters as well as providing linear stability once a high enough velocity has been achieved. The improved thruster mod adds this slick orange exhaust flame out the back of the atmospheric engines, as well as thrust reverses which convert 75% of the engine's power into stopping force, a necessity for approaching a runway and a safe touchdown. Additionally, the shape and design of the fuselage was made possible through the use of the small ship mega mod pack, as well as the reworked armour panels and ramps mod with seats taken from the azimuth complete mod pack. This combination of mods allows us to sidestep the limitations of the base game and create a plane with a retro-futuristic 1960s styling. The design isn't exclusively about aesthetics however, the centre of mass is directly above the main landing gear. This balancing causes the wheels to act like a fulcrum and means that you can take off on level ground be it an ice lake, grassy plains, desert or dedicated runway, rather than needing a launch ramp. Because I think the plane should be able to land anywhere, it runs on the vanilla wheels rather than using the Aviation Wheels mod pack, given that the vanilla wheels have superior durability and traction. Besides the mods, the plane runs a few useful scripts such as the rotorless radar script by that rad guy, the configurable automatic LCD script by Mmaster, and the precise timer script by Seoxonic which is used to control the retractable landing gear. The plane is also equipped with FAA approved nav lights and landing spotlights to assist final approaches in the dark. The takeoff procedure for the Albatross is relatively simple. Simply enter the cabin, press the system start button, engine on button and gyros on button, then take your seat, disable the parking brake and begin taxiing. Once ready for takeoff, turn the engine throttle to maximum and accelerate to 100km an hour before pitching the nose up. The wheels should then leave the ground allowing you to safely retract the landing gear for the remainder of the flight. At this point, regulate the throttle until you maintain a constant speed at your desired altitude. If you strike the right balance you can maintain flight in excess of 20 hours without needing to replenish the battery charge, and this can be further extended by having the reactors fully fuelled. To touch down, make sure the landing zone is sufficiently level and deploy the landing gear. Approach gently with the engines idling and the nose pitched up at a 10 degree inclination to gradually bleed off speed until the wheels are a few meters above the ground. Activate the thrust reverses and use the S key to decelerate the plane until the wheels touch the ground. Keep the S key held and use the spacebar to apply the brakes until the plane comes to a complete halt. I recommend disabling the atmospheric engines and using the power of the wheels to taxi safely once you have landed, and if you're constructing the runway to land this plane on, I also recommend having beacons at the centre line at each end to make the perfect approach easy when you're in the cockpit. 
You can also see here that the plane has some very impressive stopping powers. It can reduce its speed from 280 km an hour to zero in less than 400 meters. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode and I hope you like the Albatross Twin Jet. It's the first modded ship that I've showcased on my channel, so let me know what you think of the modded ships in general. I won't be completely abandoning my vanilla builds as I'll be alternating on a weekly basis between modded and vanilla. If you enjoyed the Synergy Shipyard, hit the like button as it really helps me out, subscribe if you're not already, and check out my live streams where you can see me build these ships from the ground up. And until next time, take it easy, have a good day, bye bye.